So my name is Reverend Clarence Jefferson, and I'm serving as interim pastor of the Greater Second Baptist Church in Woodland, California. And we are delighted to be here with our, all of the viewers as we share the Word of God. Uh, today from the book of Philippians, uh, the second chapter, but, but let's just point out a few things before we <clears throat> go into our focus text. Number one, uh, Paul was the author of the book of Philippians. The theme of the book is Christian experience. The writing of the book was in A.D. 60, and it's one of the books of Paul while he was in prison in Rome. <clears throat> that he wrote this letter. It was a very intimate relationship between uh, Paul and the Philippian church. They had strong bounds of love and respect, and they cared very much for Paul. Paul wrote this letter in response, thanking them uh, for the generous contribution that they had given Paul, who was sent to him by Epipeditus. While Epipeditus carried this, uh, this benevolence to Paul uh, from uh, Philippi and arrived in Rome, he fell sick. So that Paul uh, had fallen sick at this particular time. So the church was concerned. What's going on? How are you doing? Uh, are you coming back? Will you get well? Uh, um, uh, we are continuously praying for you. Uh, that God would put his blessings and grace upon you. So he wrote back and said to them essentially that, that not only had God graciously healed him, but he had also healed Epipeditus. Uh, God sent uh, Luke and the position to work on both of them. So in the second chapter of this book of uh, Philippians, it, it, it talks about attitudes. That if we are going to be an example to those on the outside, there's going to have to be a demonstration of who Christ is by our conduct. We live in a world today that it's self-centered. Everybody wants what they want and what's best for them. But in this book, we learn that the emphasis, instead of being placed on oneself, uh, it is placed on others, and that's what it's all about. I, I should read a verse uh, from uh, uh, this chapter, second chapter of the book of Philippians. And I want to begin at verse 2. Fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, being of one mind. Let nothing be done in strife or vain glory, but in lowness of mind. Let each esteem the other better than themselves. What you're going to put on exhibit, uh, seeing that you were not the center focus, but instead uh, it was placed on others. 
vain glory, vain glory, uh, things uh, that really doesn't amount to a whole lot. Uh, it really doesn't count when it comes to the church. Let me just read briefly a summary of the church, and I'll briefly. A local church is a symbol of professional believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Living in, in most part in one location who meets together in his name for baptism, for the Lord's Supper, for worship, for praise and prayer, fellowship and testimony. And, and, and I'll tell you, as we look at those uh, things that relates to the church and relates to who we are as Christians, we need to always realize our purpose. I've seen those who have gone, churches who have gone through the motions and they have their song, praise, dance, but no substance. So Paul wanted them to focus on not themselves, but lifting and elevating others, esteeming others higher than oneself. If there is something that you have done uh, that they deserve praise, he ought to allow somebody else to do the praise for you rather than you praising yourself because it leads to self centeredness Not what God have done, <clears throat> but what we have done. And I'll tell you, there are no small you and big eyes. Everybody in the church has something to offer. Now, that's why at the church we serve, we, we have the saying that it is a church where everybody is somebody. It doesn't matter your name, your color, but everybody, and we do mean everybody, uh, uh, and not just some. Uh, uh, that Christ is the center of our attraction and not we ourselves. Attitudes, 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 attitudes. <clears> How <throat> attitude depends on attitude. That how high you go depends on your attitude. So Paul is stressing time and time again that look upon Jesus and not on ourselves. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> The mind that was in Jesus, it was a serving attitude. Even though he was equal with God, uh, he chose to humble himself and become a servant. Even though he had the right, but he gave up his right to be a servant, and, and, and we ought to have that same attitude, uh, that serving attitude that it's not me, that I, uh, a serving attitude, uh, uh, the slaves, uh, they understood that they were there to serve, that they, had, they didn't have rights and privileges as others, because they were servants. 
they needed permission. They didn't give orders. They didn't make suggestions. And they listened. And that's what we need to be as it relates to God. And listening for the voice of God to give us instruction to give us directions as to where we should or should not go. We need to let God set the priorities when it comes to service, how it should be conducted. It ought to allow the Holy Spirit to dictate the spirit of the service and that serving attitude means that we are stepping back so that he can step up. We are giving up, letting go, allowing God to be God and, and we be that faithful service that says, Lord, what you want me to do. So Paul suggests that letting that type of attitude that Christ said that it's not me, but it's my Father. Uh, I've come to serve Him and not myself. <clears throat> Being in the, in the form and fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had mightily exalted him. And it follows here that when we humble ourselves, and wait on God until he elevates us to where we should be. Until he sets the posture that we should have. Uh, because he was humble, as we go down in the Bible, <coughs> uh, that Every knee and every tongue shall bow to him. Not only things that are just on earth, but things that are in heaven. Other principalities, other rulers, uh, uh, whatever that's in this world, will one day, will bow their knee. And I suggest that there, there's two judgments. There's the first judgment. And, and I would suggest being in that one because the second judgment isn't as nice. It isn't as good. In fact, the second one is horrible. So, but if we confess him now, then we won't have to worry about when judgment comes to be faced for uh, him once again. Every knee, every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. There's nobody else. He's the only Lord. Uh, he's eternal. Uh, he's from everlasting to everlasting. Developing this attitude and posture allows us to see uh, where I place is in the church. Wherefore, my beloved, beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not at just in when I can see you, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation 
not your soul salvation, but work out your own salvation. No one can work out their soul salvation. Salvation comes from God and God only. But the salvation here is the assignment in which God have given each of us. And I said earlier that we all have a place. We all have something to offer. It doesn't matter how small or large it seems. And doing what God has called us, that's working out our salvation. Uh, some he've called to be writers. Some he've called to be singers. Some he've called to be preachers. Some he've called to, to be encouragers. Some he've called to be informative. But they all have a assignment. So Paul wanted them to reflect on that uh, assignment uh, that they have. have. Not just be so that Paul can say, we don't need man to approve us, for God knows. He sees all. In fact, God looks at the Hard. He looks at the, the intent. He looks at the reason that we do something rather than simply what we say. So he said in that attitude, that knowing that God is keeping track, that one day we will give an account of what's done in our body, whether it's in him or out, but every person will give an account. God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. That is not us, and I, I keep emphasizing that we get the right attitude. It's not us, but it is God that is working in us to will and to do for what God wants, for what God have in mind, for what God purpose and objective and what God will is. And that's what we are working to. And when we get the right attitude, we begin to see that it's not us that is important, but it is his good pleasure. It's his will that he's working, uh, that we are working toward. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation. Uh, we, we often talk about terrorists and, and what ISIS and uh, going to do. But I, I tell you, what's more important is what God's going to do. Uh, for, for if we rely on God, he's able to keep and protect us. And I said that if God cannot protect us, there is no protection. Oh, yes, he used other means. He works through other agency. God works through mankind uh, to secure. Oh, it was God that, that kept us and woke us. Woke us up this morning, it was him that made the way. Even over the, the objection of those who wasn't fond of us, who did not particularly like us, those who had a ill favor in mind. Uh, but God is more powerful than what it, 
ever other force there is. And that's why I say, if God cannot protect you, if God cannot save you, if God cannot heal you, if, if God cannot lift you up, and then it's not possible apart from the very strength of and power of God. He is the one. He is the one. And I, my attitude is that I'm going to look and lean on him and not my own understanding in spite of uh, sometime I, I think I have the answer only to find out that I had the wrong question. But I look to God. He is the one who is able uh, to keep us. <clears throat> we need to be a pattern to this mean, crooked, perverse world. We are the pattern that they're going to see God uh, through our behavior, uh, through how we act, we act toward one another, how we love, share, and encourage, and push on. That's what the world is going to see uh, 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 when we present the right pattern, having the right attitude, then God gets the praise. Uh, he gets the glory because all praises and glory is his and his alone. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice. Paul saying that One day, that when we meet in eternity future, I'll rejoice at your trust and reliance and depending on God. That how you showed the outside world of what it means to be a Christian, and that's what we have to demonstrate what it means to be a Christian, but it's by uh, action and not by word only. So he said, I want to take pride. One day, I, when, I, when we get on the other side, I want to say, servant, well done. You, you, you ran the, the race well, uh, uh, in spite of, but, but, uh, uh, but uh, uh, come up a little higher. There are the rewards that are waiting for what you've done. And not only myself, but all of those who love and work and serve, there are going to be rewards. And we'll meet our parents and other loved ones and, and rejoice and, and, and perhaps talk about some of these days. The good things, he won't allow us to remember the bad things, but we'll be able to share some of the good things while we were here on the other side. So that's what Paul was saying, that I'm looking forward that, that, that my work wasn't in vain, that my teaching, my effort, my, my, my suffering it was well redempted in you. And I'm rejoicing and praising the Lord in that. So once again, we've been delighted to be here with you. Reverend Clarence Jefferson and I'm the interim pastor of the Greatest Second Baptist Church in Woodland. Uh, we have uh, Sunday school at 930, 11 o'clock worship service. Uh, come join us. We'll be delighted to have you.